This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, one o'clock block. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And today we're going to talk about, uh, gee, I guess, I guess it's Think Tech Asia um, because Xi Jinping is so you know, clearly involved. Russell Hanma, uh, the author of the APEC uh, Master Plan, right here with us today, who follows all these diplomatic events, international relations, uh, and meetings, all kinds of meetings. Welcome to the show, Russell. Yeah, thank you, Jay, for inviting me. I know today is a very important subject. I know that all of the G20 uh, leaders are all meeting uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, for the uh, economic summit meeting with the leaders. So I know there's a big crucial concern between the U.S.-China relationship. So I know that President Donald Trump and uh, President Xi Jinping is uh, going to meet on the sidelines. So that would be interesting, how they're going to try to well, resolve this. Well, he's warming up to it. Uh, he, ha he hasn't given any slack on the existing tariffs. He said he's happy with the existing tariffs. I'm talking about Trump. And then he has threatened another $260 million, billion, billion excuse me, of, of additional tariffs going into the meeting. It's a way to make friends, you know. Uh, so let's talk about that meeting. Is, is that meeting going to happen? Um, is that meeting, um, you know, set up so that it's likely to succeed in some way? And what will they talk about? I think uh, if you look at it, I know they've the, the trade delegates between the trade officials both China and the United States, our United States Trade Representative's Office, uh, Robert Leisenheyer has a, uh, we have a trade group there, discussion with the Chinese officials already. This has been going on since uh, last year when uh, we tried to work with China uh, prior to that bringing the tariffs on board. Yeah. So I think the key issues are gonna be, uh, I know like you said, there's, there's a lot of ramification impact from the uh, tariffs that Donald Trump uh, imposed with this executive order, with the, it all started from the aluminum, steel kind of tariff, ten percent on forget aluminum, farming, twenty five percent on, on steel, agricultural so, products, right? Agricultural. And the farmers products. in the Midwest are starting to lose confidence in him. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a lot of ramification because, like I said, our uh, agriculture, our farming industry, especially soil beans, our, our, our cattle, our yeah. poultry that we can be exporting abroad. And uh, but good thing is some of those things that we're gonna export to China, uh, where China was gonna extract it out from our, uh, in, because of imposing our tariffs, uh, we kind of diverted the, the uh, so a lot of them went to some South American countries or even to European Union, especially with soil beans. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, well they can get them of, somewhere else. And, right. and, and other countries are happy to supply them. Mm -hmm. It's a vacuum. They make a lot of money. Um, but, you know, one thing is, it's my impression, you, and you either confirm or reject, but it's my impression that when Trump started to impose all these tariffs, especially on China, he kept on increasing them. There's never been a time when he, you know, rolled them back. Mm -hmm. It's always forward. It's always more. It's always more products and more money. Am I right? Yeah, I think if you, I guess what, how uh, the Trump administration is uh, moving forward, uh, trying to work out the deal with China, is that we want to impose the tariffs just to make sure that we want to balance the trade deficit. I think we had uh, like over $500 billion of trade deficit. So I think right now, when he imposed all those trade deficits that in order to balance it, uh, I think just the, we did the numbers, and the U.S. Uh, uh, consumers and uh, Commerce Department looked into it and said that there's about three, but impact's going to be about three hundred sixty billion dollars so far with all the tariffs. Mm -hmm. That so, in other words, that uh, for tip to tat, China is trying to impose all these tariffs to just to make up on the deficit. Yeah, so it's a war. Exactly. So that's what's happening. Is so, it working? Uh, I think from a, this point of view, uh, when I look at it in the long run, I think it's sooner or later because of the. Uh, Law, law of dimensioning returns, there won't be another marginal benefit. If you keep on imposing tariffs, eventually we're going to have a, a negative impact. And you've already seen that with our, uh, our General Motors, with the automobile well, industry. Well, let's talk about that. And uh, they're going to be closing four factories. 100,000 and, and jobs. 180,000 180, jobs are going to be lost because there's going to be uh, four factories. They're going to close one in Mexico, one in uh, Canada. And I think... Uh, there's going to be the rest going to be in the U.S. soil of uh, the manufacturing plants. So because of the high, uh, the price of the steel and imposing tariffs on that, so uh, you might see a lot of these impacts from the multinational companies that's 
that we're yeah. manufacturing, that well, we rely on the raw business. materials from it's China. It's certainly business. And he's mad at them already. He thinks they, they, he, they should reject their business analysis, keep those factories open, and lose money. Um, so, I mean, if you look at his international tariff and trade policy, it hasn't helped General Motors. And General Motors is uh, obviously they're in some distress that they should close all those factories and get, put all those people on the street. This is bad for the country. What do they say, Russell? It's coming back to me. As General Motors goes, so goes the nation. This is not a small thing. Yeah, I think, yeah, because I know that GM was uh, investing a lot in, in Asia. I know they're trying to uh, set up manufacturing plants. And not only General Motors, but even Ford, Chrysler, even our Boeing uh, Corporation, they were going to start up some kind of manufacturing uh, fusel lodge for their uh, yeah. For their uh, well, seven three seven seven eight seven. Undermined seriously now. Right now, now they're taking that back out, and uh, so there's everything's kind of whole because we don't really have a, a technology transfer agreement with China yet. Yeah. So we need to impose that, and well, hopefully, we have this tariff thing with the trade negotiation goes. You know, it might take a while, but the working group's got to set up some kind of time frame well, of phasing out the tariff. Some of these schedule. things are permanent things. You knock off all those factories and all those uh, employees and all those cars and lines and assemblies, you know, equipment. Um, you can't put Humpty back together overnight. Um, so I mean, th that's a one-way street. And I think to the extent that this whole arrangement with him has damaged uh, GM's possibilities of selling outside the country, um, that's not a short-term deal. That's a long-term deal. So the, the damage to GM is long term. Yeah, I think so, because you look at some of these uh, parts of materials, uh, they hire a lot of these subcontractors to, uh, to bring up these yeah. uh, automobile uh, parts of materials. A lot of them are manufacturing overseas where labor is cheap, and a lot of them come from China. Yeah. So you, you see that so kind of impact. Yeah, so, so the pricing yeah. structure is going to change, and I think they might, yeah. from, from uh, X factory price to wholesale, from wholesale to retail price. So there's going to be some markup prices. Yeah. And I know that there's a concern about the uh, trucks. I know that, uh, I guess this morning, uh, our administration, uh, I guess our president made a uh, press release saying that we're going to try to uh, put more tariffs on the automobile parts from China. So that's like, you know, right now they're like pickup trucks. We're paying like a lot of things that's brought in. There's 25 percent tariffs. So on that this. puts more stress on the automobile industry here, American automobile manufacturers. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. if you're going to actually build it in the overseas and bring it back to the uh, United States, that would be a problem. But if we're going to manufacture it in the U.S. soil, 100 percent, then export it out, then then we can benefit on that one. Right, and to say <clears throat> nothing about all the uh, parts suppliers that are American parts suppliers who are going to be out of work soon. Because all those factories closed, they, they'll have no market at all. What right. a great thing he's done. It's really impressive. So if I go with him you know, to Buenos Aires in Argentina, by the way, let's take a moment and sing the song. What is it again? Don't, Don't cry, cry, cry for, for Argentina. Argentina. No, we should cry for America, <laughs> yeah. not Argentina. <laughs> go ahead, sing it. Go ahead. Well, you know, I don't think <laughs> I can sing it about the night. I don't have the big <laughs> lungs there, but... <laughs> I want to clarify that neither Russell nor I can <laughs> sing. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen in Buenos Aires? Um, got G20. Talk to me about what is G20 and why are they meeting and who's involved and how likely uh, are they of uh, reaching some success? You know, some people say that 20 is too many, it rhymes. Um, you know, that you don't really get anything done if you have all those people trying to do economic agreements now? No, not necessarily. There's actually 20 uh, uh, countries who are, in, who are civilized or industrialized nations, uh, just like we have our G7, G8 summit meeting, but these are our G20. And I think if you have the top 20 countries, uh, you're going to have more saying because they're not only the Western ally countries, and you're going to see countries from India, Indonesia, uh, China, uh, South Korea, Japan. We're not going there to deal with those countries. I know, but Maybe then you got, you got other, the European not, countries are part of the G22 the, with the European Union. So I, I think you're going to see more voice and concern, and a big concern with the platform of the agenda. I know that uh, when we had our APEC conference in November, the joint statement from the leaders of the 21 country, they didn't come up with the joint statement because they were so influenced because of a U.S.-China trade relationship. So they couldn't, no general agreement So they couldn't anything, do yeah. anything because they don't want it to uh, 
pick sides mm -hmm. with the China or the United States. Right. But I think in this G20 summit, yeah. you know, there, there are concerns about the similar thing where, you know, between U.S.-China relationships is going to overtake the platform. Right. But if you look at the platform of the G20, we're going to be talking about our climate change. Uh, make sure well, all the leaders. Well, the are U.S. Following. has a very clear position on climate change, as far as this administration is concerned. It isn't happening. So, what kind of a conversation can the rest of them have on cli climate change when the United States is not part of that conversation? Well, I think, but uh, those countries are going to be moving forward anyway. Besides United I hope States, so. uh, from the U.S. point of view, we got our private sectors already, uh, you know, been developing these products for uh, energy. Uh, Alternative okay, sources, so, so we're, in, we're, in good sh we're in good hands. What? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> we got our wind power, we got our solar power, we have a geothermal, uh, you know, we okay, got all these yeah, alternative right. energy. electric Russia's, cars are doing good. The world, though, you know, climate change is global, <laughs> Russell. Right. Okay, so let's, let's look at Trump. Let's follow him around. He gets to Buenos Aires tomorrow, okay, and he has meetings, a couple of these, the meetings start a couple of days after that, to the extent he has meetings. And the big meeting is Xi Jinping. What, what is he going to say in that meeting, and what is Xi Jinping going to say to him? Take us there, Russell. I think, he, I think this morning, uh, according to the uh, press release, uh, Donald Trump did speak with Xi Jinping already on the phone, mm -hmm. and they were going to discuss about it. But when he left uh, Washington, D.C. to go on his Air Force One to go taking a flight to uh, uh, Argentina. He mentioned that uh, he likes that uh, you know if China doesn't come up with a concrete measure, he's going to stay with the tariffs because right now tariffs are he's bringing in billions of dollars into our resources in the U.S. Treasury's department. So he, he really? thinks that the tariffs. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. yeah, but I think in terms of uh, uh, you know we got to see what the working group is going to be coming up. Not only between the leaders, but we've got to rely on the working what's, group. What's a working group in the context of a G20 meeting? I think you've got our, our trade officials. Our, our, American our, trade officials? Trade, trade official, officials from other China, countries like uh, China. Exactly. And, and they and, meet. And they've already been meeting in the past, so they just got to come up with a concrete measure of how to approach this uh, tariff thing, some kind of phasing out period. Some, some, some leaders are saying that maybe we should postpone the tariff for right now until we resolve the, uh, the issues. Well, so in other words, taking off the tariffs, like say, now we'll, we'll go back to what happened two years ago. We won't put any oh, you tariff. Mean take them off. Yeah, take them off until we resolve it because there's so much ramification impact right now globally. But he didn't say that. Uh, he said he are going to put more tariffs on. Yeah, but he didn't say he, that, he but I think put, some of the other trade uh, uh, officials the are kind of The whole tariff thing is his initiative, Russell. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he control it from day to day? Yes, he does that. So I think that's so. So in other ways, in order to persuade uh, Donald Trump or try to make him realize what the consequences are, I think the China side under Xi Jinping's trade delegation has got to come up with a concrete measure, making sure that they are going to be working together. They're going to be some kind of phasing out period, and they're going to be invest. Good examples, one, uh, in order to resolve. There's three issues on this with U.S.-China relation. One is a trade and tariff issue and how to resolve it in, so that we can have this technology transfer agreement so we can work with China. Second is uh, freedom of navigation. There's a big problem right now with all these man-made islands, sea. China seas, and just recently they had an incident with Taiwan, the China Naval Force, and the U.S. is sending our fleet over there now, and you know, going around the uh, South China Sea right in the patrol. These are not happy times. So it, those, my suggestions on the man-made islands, on the 9-9, -9, uh, uh, they can all open up to the international community. China can say, hey, we got this man-man island that we built. We're going to have restaurants. We're going to have merchant marines can come here. They can rest. They can have some kind of uh, How about a safety, duty, a duty safety free mall? Or anything that to open up to the general, to the international community, that, that they're not going to be using that as a post for military purposes. Okay, that's And that, that's going to give them a Jane... Uh, I think that's, Game that's a perfect China. Uh, time to uh, segue yeah, into it. Exactly. A, and the third is the humanitarian aspect. We'll take a, a short break, and Russell has an idea that um, has as much chance of surviving uh, as I can possibly <laughs> imagine. <laughs> what are you been smoking? Never mind. <laughs> we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back very soon.
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. The truth is I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Nice. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Or else it's not going to... Bingo, it might we're back with Russell. He's really <laughs> exercised about this. So, Russell, you mentioned that there was supposed to be this agreement on technology transfer. Um, and that, uh, I mean, if you were there and uh, if you, you know, had any control over this, you would suggest we try to make that agreement with China. What is that agreement supposed to look like? I think if you look at the technology trend, it was started from the information, technology information agreement where uh, we were sharing information, uh, make sure there was going to be, you know, meeting the right uh, IT in, information technology agreement. If you do proceed, make sure you pay your intellectual property rights and uh, all that kind of infringement of copyrights. So those kind of things got to be included and in the technology transfer agreement. Who, who's, in whose interest does that work? I mean, does that work for the U.S. or does it work for China? Who, who wins by an agreement I along think those it, lines? It, that, that is a very important uh, uh, agreement because uh, between U.S. and China, you know, for example, uh, let's look into the, our space technology. I know China has their international, we have our international space center station. China has their own little moon jade uh, space station. And uh, they're all working separately. But if we, I know between NASA and the uh, Chinese uh, space uh, program over there, they want to work together for the Mars mission or the moon development. So I think in terms of technology transfer agreement, if you want to bring the space technology together, uh, so China working on one way, we have our international uh, uh, coalition of group working on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. If they can work together with their resources, I think that'd be a, a better way of approaching yeah, I, I sure hope so, from your lips to uh, you know, Trump's ears, so to speak. Well, uh, okay, let's, let's put that aside for a moment and look at the larger context. It seems to me that there are only two meetings of you know, major consequence uh, in Trump's visit to uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, one of them is uh, China, which, where he's building up more and more tension. And they are too. They are too. They're, they're getting tougher too. Um, and then Russia, you know, we, we, with, with whom he has this love-hate relationship. God knows what the bottom of that uh, swamp is. <laughs> but, but now with Putin, you know, it gets very complicated with Putin. Putin is, is making very aggressive moves in the Ukraine. You know, not only shutting down Ukrainian shipping, but seizing ships mm. in, in, a, in a location through those straits there, Kerch, I think it is, and the Kerch Straits mm. where, you know, we, he's going to strangulate them in terms of their shipping. Mm -hmm. um, he's already taken a good part of their, their geography. Um, now he's going to take their economy. They must be really upset about this. Um, and, and then Trump says, well, he, he made the meeting with, with Putin, and then he terminated the meeting with Putin. And then he made the me meeting again with Putin, the meeting in Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. and then he terminated it. So it's been on, off, on, off, and the present condition of it is off. Mm -hmm. Is this directly related to the Ukraine, or is it something else? Could it be related to the, you know, the Russia investigation in this country? Um, why is Putin having so much trouble making his mind up as to whether he wants to have a meeting with, with Putin? I think the meeting was canceled because of our president, Donald Trump, uh, mentioned that because of the, uh, what happened with uh, Ukraine and Crimea. And one day, uh, I think there were some couple uh, sailors from Crimea, uh, Ukraine, that was uh, overtaken by the Russian uh, Navy. Yeah. And so they, they haven't returned them back yet to the Crimea or to so Ukraine. So this is in protest. Yeah, so they're actually kind of integrating them still. So what yeah. happened was uh, 
our administration thought about it and said that, hey, if they're, they're not giving them a freedom to re return the, uh, the sailors from Ukraine, we're not going to have this meeting. Yeah. So that's so why we canceled not, the meeting. It's not going to stop uh, Putin. Right. Yeah, so I think, I think a relation between U.S. and Russia is very important too. Not only China, but uh, because of our, our past history, our nuclear arsenal, the Cold War, the, the Cold War issues, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, those, you know, those kind of things. So we need Russia to work together, uh, especially with the issue with North Korea still, because there's that, uh, the, po the Communist Party within China. North Korea and Russia. They got the triangle of, of the communist well, on, control. Well, on uh, North Korea, although we haven't seen much news about it, and Trump has, uh, you know, has trumpeted that everything is swell in North Korea. Fact is, the satellites show the North Koreans are still doing it. Uh, they're building missile launching sites uh, in various places in North Korea. So although there's not that much press beating uh, mm -hmm. coming from Kim Jong Un, fact is they're doing it like they were doing it before. So I'm not sure you can say that Trump has succeeded in that element of his foreign mm -hmm. policy. Uh, maybe he's confused us and deceived mm -hmm. us, but he hasn't actually achieved anything there. In terms of our relationship with Russia, this is a great concern that Russia is back at it in, in the Crimea and in the Ukraine. Um, and it doesn't sound like putting the meeting on and taking it off and putting it on and taking mm -hmm. it off is going to have any salient effect on, on Putin's uh, you know, strategic mm -hmm. policy in that area. Um, that we're at great risk in, in running afoul, you know, of, of Russia, of, of having a real contention mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where the, the love and the hate turn into hate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what's going to happen? I mean, if he doesn't have a meeting with Putin, uh, how can we resolve this tension? I think it's already, you know, getting between the North and the South Korean. We, we, we you know, we want to let the Koreans resolve the major issues. Uh, I know the Kim Min Un and uh, Moon Jae-in of the uh, South Korean uh, president is working together right now. They have a unification committee there. And uh, you have seen that even with the POWs, the MIS from the Korean War, they did return some of the rhetorics of the uh, remains. So I'm is, sure is that, that... Is that important? Yeah, exactly. We, we did identify uh, a lot of these missing in action. When you compare soldiers. that to, you know, running nuclear yeah, before, missiles, before, before it doesn't they didn't seem even, to me to be very important. I know, but before, they didn't even give us that. A uh, chance of giving back the, uh, uh, mm. the missing in action uh, mm. remains, but now, now they, they they even blew up their own old, old facilities. So you know it's a start. I think in the Korean way or the Asian way, they're gonna take their time and see. But let the uh, to me, you know, still they're moving forward, but slowly. And I think at the end of the day, uh, we would like to see the North and the South Korea work together. Oh, and, yeah, uh, oh, sure, but uh, you know, it doesn't seem like we're yeah, really close to that. Take, oh, it, that's not going to happen South overnight. South Korea would love to see Is South Korea going to be part of the G20 meeting? Oh, yeah, they're part of the G20. So They'll maybe Trump there. can talk to them there, yeah. or at least his team mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you think? I mean, uh, they're going there, there's a lot of people involved, there's a lot of press involved, uh, a lot of uh, Trump's bluster so far. Um, with, and it's deep water in dealing with uh, Xi Jinping, uh, in dealing with Putin. Uh, whether he deals with him or not is an open question, but uh, what do you think is going to happen here? Is this as historic a meeting as, as I think? Is this going to result in any denouement that we can have and treasure going forward? Is this going to make the world safer for America or not? I think if you look at the location and uh, to be, you know, realistically, being on a Saturday night, having a dinner and, uh, and, uh, in Argentina where they got the tango and all that. Uh, Are Buenos you telling Aires. me it's romantic? Yeah, again, you know, it might be hard for making a deal right there, but it's going to take one. But they can kind of gesture to the working group people, say, hey, this is the way we want to approach it. And maybe from there, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take time. It's not gonna happen. Like, hey, we got this. this it's, the issue is so important right now: the U.S.-China relation with the trade. So we've got our number one and number two countries in the world battling it out. So we want to make sure that we do it right, and uh, so that we can continue on. And as you know, we got world leaders. You know what leaders got to do? They have to. They have to be the uh, problem solvers. They got to resolve the problems of the world for our human race here. But mm -hmm. I think this was G20, and uh, I, so I hope, you know, I wish uh, President Donald Trump and Xi Jinping to come up with a better measure and see, see if we can come up with a working group 
uh, or better agenda and see in order to bring the uh, world peace. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, I hope, I hope there's something good come of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things uh, that I'd like you to assume with me for a moment, just for a moment, is at, in Argentina, despite, you know, the romance uh, and the music and the, uh, the tango and what have you, and well, don't cry for Argentina, <laughs> cry for America. <laughs> Let's assume nothing much happens in Argentina. There's a lot of posturing, okay, but no deals are made. Uh, and everyone says uh, that the United States is not, you know, not capable of making an agreement with China or Russia. Nothing happens. Okay. These, these meetings, I never know when they're going to happen. Do you know when they're going to happen? That, like the G20s look, popped up. Um, so if it doesn't work, okay, when is the next meeting? I think they already scheduled. I think the next meeting is going to be in uh, next year. They do it annually, so uh, it's going to be in Singapore, I believe. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's okay. Well, heard, Singapore. So, that's yeah. where he met with Kim Jong Un, isn't it? Right. right, right. He's, he's familiar with Singapore. Yeah, Singapore has a, a special seat to be part of the G20, and uh, so they can be an observatory kind of uh, country for. Uh, but you know, they've been they've been promoting a lot of the free trade agreement for. Indo-Pacific region, so right now, and in, uh, in we have our headquarters of APEC is in Singapore. Mm, right. So right. I think they can oversee, you know, within the Asia Pacific. Well, maybe we have hope for next year. You know. Mm -hmm. One last question is about Brexit. Okay, Theresa May uh, mm -hmm. wants to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of consternation still mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Britain over this. Um, how does, uh, and I'm sure Britain is going to be there at the G20, right, right. Uh, how does the G20 play on Brexit and on Brexit's trade relation, or rather the UK's trade relation mm -hmm. uh, with the US and for that matter with Russia and China? Oh, I'm glad you brought that question to me, Jay. Uh, just uh, last week, the UK and the uh, uh, European Union met and uh, Theresa May made an uh, agreement with them that they're going to keep try to keep everything intact in certain ways, especially with security issues with immigration and working visa, and uh, those kind of things going to be intact. So I think in terms of Asia Pacific region, I know that United Kingdom or, or the England wants to be member of the TPP as well, the Trans-Pacific Partners Free Trade Agreement. So they want to have their voice of concern. They want to be part of Asia Pacific region. They mm -hmm. want to move into there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Historically, they've been there, you know. So if you look at the history, that we have so much influence from uh, from uh, United Kingdom, from Britain. So, you know, at least um, in the neighboring country of Mexico, um, Trump's biggest uh, expression of America's policy is with the caravans that are knocking at our door on the California oh, border. Yeah, that's you know? a big concern. And I wonder, and we know that most of those people are from Central America. Yeah, there are a lot of them from Honduras. Honduras, and yeah. El Salvador, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, does, does, the, 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 does the venue of this meeting in uh, Argentina offer any possibilities for him to try to resolve all the trouble that's happening in South America from, from the South side? <laughs> Do you think there's any possibility that this meeting can involve uh, countries in South America, Central America, uh, or countries near those countries uh, that can have an effect on these caravans and all the trouble that's happening in Central America? Yeah, I believe so. I think uh, if I looked at the uh, agenda, I kind of glanced at it, and there is a migration measure. In the, so I know they're going to be talking about the uh, people from South America migrating up to the north and uh, see what kind of impact. I know right now but because of the people in Mexico, uh, because they want asylum, and the United States has a procedure to, with the immigration, how to go with asylum with the political prisoners or uh, that kind of aspect. So we, that's why we have to turn them around and tell them to go back to their country. Even we get their name, their list. and. Yeah, I, I remember like in uh, Barack Obama's administration, last administration, there was some uh, leniency, leniency towards children and uh, women coming in. So we gave him a break, but on this administration, uh, we're not giving any leniency to children and women, so they end up... No, we just, uh, we just lock them up. Yeah. That's what we do. There was an article about all the people he wants to lock up. Anyway, thank you very much, Russell. I hope you follow this as closely as you have previous meetings. And I hope when it's done, we can, you know, regroup and, uh, and review what has happened and what has not happened. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Russell Hunter. Thank you. Thank you, Great Jay. to have you here. Yeah.
Aloha. Aloha.